Cassini, what in the devil do you mean by making mischief with my father about Mangy? Don't you dare speak to me like that, you little minx. Remember that you are my house. Shut why don't you mind your own business? What is it to you whether I choose to marry Mangan or not? I suppose you think you can bully me, you miserable little matrimonial adventurer. Every woman who hasn't any money is a matrimonial adventurer. It's easy for you to talk. You have never known what it is to want money. You can pick up men as if they were daisies. I am poor and respectable. Oh, respectable? How did you pick up Mangan? How did you pick up my husband? And you have the audacity to tell me that I am a, a siren. So you are. You were born to lead men by the nose. If you weren't, Hector would have waited for me, perhaps. Oh, Ellie. Oh, my petty kins, my unhappy darling. I am so sorry about Hector, but what can I do? It's not my fault. I'd give him to you if I, I don't could. blame you for that. What a brute I was to quarrel with you and, and call you names. Do kiss me and say you're not angry with me. Don't slop and gush and be sentimental. Don't you see that unless I can be hard, hard as nails, I should go mad? I don't care damn about you calling me names. Do you think a woman in my situation can feel a few hard words? A poor little woman. A poor little situation. I suppose you think you're being simple. You're just foolish and stupid and selfish. You see me getting a smasher right in the face that kills a whole part of my life. The best part that can never come again. And you think you can help me over by a little coaxing and kissing. When I want all the strength I can get, something iron, something stony, I don't care how cruel it is. You go all mushy and want to slobber over me. I'm not angry and I'm not unfriendly. But for God's sake, do pull yourself together. I don't think that because you're on velvet and always have been, women who are in hell can take it as easily as you. Very well. But I must warn you that when I am neither coaxing nor kissing nor laughing, I am only wondering how much longer I can stand living in this cruel, damnable world. You object to the siren, well, I drop the siren. You want to rest your wounded bosom against a grindstone. Well, here is the grindstone. That's better. You really have a trick of falling in everyone's mood. Because you don't understand. Because you're not the sort of woman whom there's only one man and only one child. I certainly don't understand how you're marrying that object there will console you for not being able to marry Hector. Perhaps you don't understand why I was quite a nice girl this morning now. I'm neither a girl nor particularly nice. Oh, yes, I do. It's because you have made up your mind to do something despicable and wicked. I don't think so, sorry. I must make the, me the best of my ruined house. <laughs> oh, you'll get over it. Your house isn't ruined. Of course I shall get over it. You don't suppose I'm going to sit down and die of a broken heart, I hope. Or become an old maid living on paintings from the sick and indigent Roomkeepers Association. But my heart is broken all the same. What I mean by that is that I know what has happened to me and Hector will never happen to me again. In a world for me, there's Hector and a lot of other men who are just the same as another. If I can't find love, that is no reason why I should have poverty. And are there no young men with money? Not within my reach. A young man would have the right to expect love from me. And would perhaps leave me if he found I could not give it to him. Rich young men can get rid of their wives, you know, pretty cheaply. But this object, as you call him, can expect nothing from me than I am prepared to give him. He will be your owner, remember. He will make the bargain pay him and not you. Ask your father. You need not trouble on that score, Hassan. I have more to give Boss Magnet than he has to give me. 
It is I who am buying him, and at a pretty good price, too, I think. Women are better at that sort of bargain than men. I have taken the boss's measure, and ten boss magnets shall not prevent me from doing far more as his wife than I have ever been able to as a porter. Shall they, boss? I think not. I shouldn't have to wonder how long my gloves will last anyway. Ellie, you are a wicked, sordid little beast. And you think I actually condescended to entertain that creature there to save you from him? Well, let me tell you this. If you make this disgusting match, you'll never see Hector again if I can help it. I nailed Megan by telling him that if he did not marry me, he shall never see you again. Oh, so don't think that I'm unprepared for you playing that trump against me. You just play it, that's all. I should have made a man out of Margaret and a household pair. You dare set him thinking of me if you dare. For all the impudent little fiends I have met. Hector says there's, says there's one answer you can give to a man who's broken all the rules, and that is to knock him down. What would you say if I were to box your ears? <laughs> I should pull your hair. That wouldn't hurt. Perhaps it comes off at night. You don't mean to say suddenly that your beautiful blonde hair is false. Well, don't tell Hector. He believes in it. Even the hair that is fair can force. Everything for Pull it and try. Other women can ensnare men in their hair, but I can swing a baby on mine. You can't do that, can you, Goldilocks? No. You stole my babies. Oh, petty things. Don't make me cry. You know your saying of mine making a household pet of him is a little true. Perhaps he ought to have waited for you. Would any other woman on earth forgive you? What right you had to take him all for yourself? There. You couldn't help it. He couldn't help it. Neither of us could help it. No, don't say more. I can't bear it. 